Hi, this is Mike with Minimal 3DP, and today what I'm going to talk about is printing and creating a lithophane. A uh, lithophane uh, is described as a 3D image that's designed to have different characteristics or a different look depending on the light source and the light projected behind it. So the light and having a light behind the image changes it and makes it look different. Um, they were first produced in the 1800s in both China and Europe independently. In a lot of cases they were done with a real thin uh, porcelain. So real thin porcelain was used to create these images. Uh, modern lithophanes can be created <coughs> using a CNC machine and a 3D printer. In our case, we're interested in what we can do with a 3D printer. To start with, there are two different sites you can use image to lithophane at 3dp.rocks and then also it's litho at itslitho.com. In my case, I really like the options that I can do with itslitho.com. So we're going to start with we're going to use that site today. So the first step to create a litho is find an image. And what I've decided to do is I'm interested in uh, the scene where Thanos snaps his fingers in the Avengers. And so I've done a Google image search and I found an image I like. I'm going to go ahead and save that image to my local hard drive. Once I've saved that image, I can go over to it, its litho, hit upload, and go ahead and upload the image. So once I have my image uploaded, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and go to the edit screen. In the edit screen, I have a variety of options to change the luminescence and various grayscaling. Image editor, where I can change the brightness of the image. In the case of lithos, you tend to want them a little brighter because things will jump a little bit more. In my case, what I'm going to do is just lighten this image a little bit. So once I have the image lightened and look in the way I want, uh, one of the other options I guess I should point out is cropping. In my case, I want this whole image, but let's just say I want his hand snapping. I can use the crop width tools to crop it down to just the part of the image I want. Let's say I want to come up from the bottom. So I can play with the settings here to get exactly what I want. And as I said, in my case, I just want the whole image. So now I have the image. I've lightened it up a little bit. And I like the look of it. So let's go over to the model. And this is where I, I really like it, Slitho. Uh, besides the image editing, you have a variety of shape options you can do. Um, planes, cylinders, spheres, uh, pumpkins, again for uh, Halloween, uh, Christmas related models. Um, the initial one it starts with is just the plane. I don't particularly like the, the plane alone, mainly because uh, I, I don't think it touches the build plate enough. And I found that those tend to be a problem also you have to prop it up. I'm going to go ahead, go over here. There's some cool options where there's some profiles that are already made. So if I click on uh, cylinder lamp, hit the download button, I get actually to create a Thanos lampshade. Um, in my case, I really don't want a lampshade. What I want is more of an arc. So I'm going to go over here and do this arc puck light. Really what I'm interested in is more the arc. 
this back here um, is called an attribute in its litho. And the attribute is typically what's used to hold the light or to mount uh, your model. In my case, as I mentioned, I'm more interested in just the image itself and that arc. And let me go through my various options here I can look at. I have options we can do uh, with a frame. We can also do with no frame. And then also with a border. In my case, I actually like it with the frame. So I'm going to leave the frame there. And it's looking like, let's go back to edit. Looking like it's cropping a little bit. So let's uncheck that so I don't want the image cropped. So I've uncropped the image. And right now, the height of the image is about 150. Width is uh, 254 millimeters. Let's go ahead and make this a little smaller. So I'm going to bump this down to 100. So that should make it a little smaller. We'll go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard. So that shrunk it down some. And as you notice, the attribute doesn't shrink, and that's designed for a light puck. And I think there's a uh, there's a link somewhere here to by which light works uh, from Amazon. So if I don't like the frame or, or some of the other options, I can change that. Big thing here is on the quality options. I'm doing 0.1 millimeter, and that's uh, that'll match what layer height I want to use. On the model preview, I leave it on low because on low I like how it'll load. It loads pretty quick and I can move things around easily so I can look at the whole model. Then scrolling down, I have options to change the uh, fitter. So I can use a bulb fitter, puck, and that's all for the attribute. Turn the attribute. If I turn the attribute off, it shows it without the attribute. Right now, I'm going to enable it with the attribute just because I want to show. And then I'll change it back to puck. As I said, I normally don't print the, the light feature, but let's just leave it there for right now. So I've got all my options looking good so all my options look good I like that so I'm going to go ahead and hit download this takes a minute to generate once it downloads or once the download and processing is finished I have several different options the options I'm interested in are lithophane plus attribute, lithophane, and just attribute. So let me download all three of those so we can look at the differences. So I'll download the lithophane plus attribute first. Next I'll do the attribute. And then lastly I'll just do the lithophane. So let's start. Let's open these up in Cura so we can see what they look like. Okay, so I have it loaded into Cura now. And you'll notice it's both the lithophane and the attribute. So let's go ahead and clear that. And let's go ahead and load just the attribute. The attribute, you can see, is just the light fixture. And in my case, I've said I just wanted the lithophane itself. So let's clear the build plate again. Okay, I've brought my, I have my lithophane into my printer, and this is my Sidewinder X1. 
The Sidewinder X1 is a bed slinger printer, meaning the bed moves back and forth. One of the first changes I want to make in Cura is I want personally this model to move as little as possible and the print head to be doing most of the movement. So what I always do is start rotating the model so that the model is facing the front of the printer and I'm minimizing the amount the model actually has to move. That looks about right. Yeah, let's move it a little more. So you'll see So what I've done is position the model so that the model should move very little and the print head should move back and forth. Now if I move over and look at my printer, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about. I've positioned a lithophane to pretty much minimize how much the bed is moving while maximizing how much the print head is moving. One of the reasons why I do this is one, I'd like to be able to see the lithophane is printing, but also I want to make sure it adheres to the bed. And I found that the more the bed moves and the model moves, particularly something this thin, it's more likely to come off the bed. So I have this positioned and cured the way I want it. Uh, do one last thing, I'll hit arrange all models just to make sure it's in the middle of the bed. Now the changes I'm going to make all have to do with the various settings. So I'm going to go ahead and the settings I'm interested in are the layer height, the number of walls, infill, and the type of infill, brim, and then the speed at which this is printing. So I'm going to go through. The first thing I'm going to do is change the layer height to 0.1. So I've changed the layer height. In my case, I want to up the number of walls to six. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the seam corner preferences are on smart hiding and uh, sharpest corner. If you use random, random will probably create pimples all over the place. So I want everything in a line. So I'll, again, I'll do that smart hiding. I'm going to keep scrolling down until I get to the infill density. I'm going to change the infill density from my default of 20% to I'm going to use 99. So I've changed it to 99. And then the infill pattern, I'm just going to leave it and change it over to lines. So now my infill density is 99 and my infill pattern is lines. So next change, I have my print speed. I reduce the print speed on this printer. I'm printing at 72 millimeters per second. I'll reduce the speed by about 30 to 40 percent. So what I'm going to do is reduce this down to 45. So now my print speed is at 45 and Cura automatically changes the wall speeds to be about half of what my print speed is. Because this is so many walls, I want it to print a little quicker. So what I'm going to do is change the wall speed to be 10 less than the print speed. So I'm going to change from 22.5. I'm going to change it to 35. So my print speed is now 35, and I'll leave everything else as is. And the last change I want to make is under build plate adhesion. I want to go from a skirt and I want to change it to a brim. reason I'm using a brim is I want that better adhesion on the bed. 
So if we look at this lithophane that's printing on the screen, you'll notice that it has such a thin base by using that brim, I'm given more area that can adhere better. So I've gone ahead and have all my settings set up and I'm going to hit slice and cura. And this will take probably a minute or two. It'll be a little bit longer because the model to process. So let me pause this and then we'll come back once it's finished. Okay, my lithophane is finished slicing. And according to cure, it'll take about 15 hours and 58 minutes, so 16 hours to print. I'm going to go ahead and save this to disk and then send it to the printer. I've sent it to the printer. And you'll notice it's printing now. And in a minute or two, I'll go ahead and load in the uh, time lapse so you can see what that looks like. Lastly, here's the final result. As you can see, it really looks good. Um, hopefully, everyone found this tutorial helpful and it'll let you create your own lithophanes using uh, similar settings. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll get back to you. If, if you liked the video and found it helpful, please give me a like and subscribe. Um, and again, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. Have a good day.